Let me start with the key principles that are very important, and you can apply them any time. I wanted to understand this and unpack for you the climate change convention because it is the basis for you to negotiate. Now you know the size. You now need to understand the principles that you can use for your negotiations. One of them, like we said, is the common but differentiated responsibility and respective capacities. But what it means is, yes, we agree that there's a problem and it is going to affect all of us, but Uh, regarding and considering a state of development and vulnerability and capability to act, we're different. Some countries can have $2 trillion to put into to a crisis like we saw in the, uh, with the COVID-19. Others might not have anything except to see their people die. So we are common but differentiated responsibility and responsibility. Also known as the CB, CD, CBDRC um, uh, uh, in, in the acronym. So once you start going to negotiation, get, get used to those uh, acronyms. Then there's also the precautionary principle. It says, well, although we accept that there is a problem, but we, there are limits to the current knowledge about the consequences of decisions and actions. The science is not all clear and, and there's still a lot of things that we don't understand. For example, we haven't understood the impact of climate change on the elephants, on the antelope, on the fish, on the tilapia you know, on all of those things that our sustainable livelihoods depend on. There's a polluter pays principle. That's an intergenerational rights that we need to make sure that we, that we owe our future generation the climate that we inherited. So we must make sure that we, we are giving the future generation a better place to live in. Then there's a people-centered approach. Whatever we do, let not the economy drive. Let's the social issues drive. Let's make sure that the people are at the center of whatever we're negotiating under the climate change convention. Remember your grandmother, remember your aunt, remember your cousin who is a, a farmer, who is running, who is, have, you know, who is having vulnerable to climate change. And then finally, it's one of the key principles is informed participation. It is up to you to make sure that you inform yourself of the decisions, of the key documents, of the key issues that are driving, and hence this training program. The main aim of the training program is to make sure that you are informed fully in preparing you to, to go and negotiate the Article 6 and the global goal on adaptation. Now, typically, what will happen in African countries is, unless we are uh, helped, the, in, the, the emissions will continue to rise in the blue, the base. The emissions will continue to increase because we are not only now enjoying the motor car, we are only now uh, enjoying electricity generator, what have you. So for us to be told, no, stop your emissions, is a bit unfair because our development, our socioeconomic development, sometimes is simply based on the use of these greenhouse gas emissions. And we're saying, yes, we can do certain things with policy, just, you know, regulations, acts of parliament to say, 
you know, uh, we're going to increase the price of petrol to try, uh, make sure people don't drive too many uh, kilometers around, et cetera, et cetera. We can say, well, we're going to power ration, I don't know, et cetera. But there are certain things that we can apply policy to reduce our emissions, but it's only a little bit that we can do, period. Then there is things that we can do for sustainability, like planting trees, you know, getting movement in our countries. Oh, you know, let us save the climate and doing the planning, uh, getting our development plans. Let's go green. Let's do, uh, uh, you know, uh, renewable energy, etc. But the science is telling us those are small compared to what we must do. We must go to reducing that level where our ecosystems will not be affected. And that the science is telling us that we really need to reduce our emissions and fast. Now, what the science is also telling us is that while all of us have to reduce the world average, the industrial countries have to reduce fast and very fast. We should probably negotiate for a picking a little bit and then reduce it later. And I'll leave it up to you how you do it, but you are better off negotiating for a little picking so that you, you have a little bit of development and then reduce. So you are saying, no, I will reduce, but you reduce fast. Show me that it, it, it can be done. And then I will pick a little bit because what they're doing, unfortunately, and we can talk about this in our discussion, is that sometimes through trade, through other pressure, we are forced to increase our emissions. But remember, and I won't spend too much time on this, we're only talking about anthropogenic emissions, leave out emissions from the, the, uh, the wildlife, the natural emissions, leave out emissions, other emissions, uh, you're only talking about emissions from the anthropogen from human activity related emissions. So for example, you are going to get methane emissions from your from your lake, from your natural lake, but um, your man-made dam, your res man-made reservoir, you can't do it. You, you, those are the ones that you may have to look at in terms of atmospheric emission reductions. One of the pillars of sustainable development is a very tricky thing, but consider it having social justice. So your social, your sustainable development must be socially just. It must, it, it might not have people who are, it must bring equity. It must make sure that people who are poor in the, the vulnerable community also take part. It must result in economic development. You must make sure that your jobs are protected and you must also have regional politics. You must involve people, you must be knowledge-based, et cetera, et cetera. People must be involved in the decision-making. So even if you're having a village, for example, your sustainable development uh, concept must make sure that the different parts of the village, the local politics, and you know what I'm talking about, must be part of the solution, as well as social justice, economic development, and labor market. You must see your jobs losing you you losing the jobs uh, as a way of implementing a climate change decision 
So, so when you go to negotiate a climate change um, treaty, have all of these in the back of your mind, that your key drivers are sustainable development for your people, because sustainable development is the word that is in the Article 2, the objective of the Convention. And sustainable development for you must have social justice, labor and market related issues, regional politics issues, and economic development. And remember, ideally, therefore, we can do mitigation and adaptation. Now, mitigation here, if you look at the English dictionary, mitigation and adaptation almost mean the same thing. But and as defined by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, mitigation is actions that reduce greenhouse gas emissions. So there are things that you can do to reduce emissions without contributing to development. Adaptation means coping, means surviving. There are issues that you can do to, to adapt that don't do mitigation and don't do development. The idea is you want to do the three, the sweet spot where you are doing mitigation, adaptation, and development at the same time. It's not easy, but as you negotiate, try and make sure that whatever your sentences, your text, ultimate de decisions drive your way towards uh, so you are mitigating as well as adapting, adapt, adapting to climate change, as well as developing, sustainably developing. So for example, you can decide to adapt to climate change. Take for example, country A in Africa, they decide to adapt. So what do they do as an adaptation measure? They're going to import the, the problem is the crop failure, no food. The main crop is uh, um, maize. So what do they do? They go in uh, uh, as an adaptation measure, they go and buy maize from another country. What has happened? You've lost all, all the, uh, um, social activity, so people are the labor, the market, the local market, you are, you are buying things from, you are using your money to buy crops from another, you are creating employment for another country, you are not creating employment for yourself. The idea is, as you adapt, make sure that you are also contributing to your own development. It's not an easy thing, but as you negotiate with climate change, Make sure that, please, you, 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 you remember the sweet spot. Your climate change mitigating and adapting for development. Now, I won't go much into this, but I'll ask you to go into reading it. But there is, for you to engage, therefore, in the climate change negotiations, you're going to need, um, certain capacities. You'll need people with different uh, backgrounds, you know, experts, business people, people with policy, uh, skills and training, people with interest in climate change issues. So you need those individuals as, as uh, your people who are taking part in the climate change negotiation must be individuals that have um, expertise that have business uh, uh, acumen that have uh, they must uh, uh, you, you must have everybody in the businesses NGO uh, or staff etc uh, etc et and you must also have those organizations that are part of the UNFCCC in, if you are an organization um, Please have a specific mandate on climate change. Don't have an organization that is talking about, uh, you know, um, I don't know, HIV AIDS. I know they, they, are, they are related somewhere, but remember, 
the specific mandate on climate change will require you to champion climate change at a higher management instead of just relegating it as a by the way if you are a network of organizations then you need to make sure that the responsibilities and uh, the institutional framework allows you to allow you to engage into the climate change um, uh, uh, convention. And then sometimes there will be social norms and values and practices. You must know that you're, uh, you're, you might be knowledgeable about climate change and have a positive towards climate change mitigation measures. <laughs> Uh, sometimes you would have uh, values and practices that, that that limit you into um, discussing climate change. And I don't want to go into that, but I'm sure we can start thinking about the values and practices in your own cultural setting that would either permit you to ha have, uh, uh, you know, uh, that you can take part in the discussions about climate change or contribute to the mitigation or adaptation measures. Now, as I come to the end of um, this part of the presentation about the, the, uh, the, the basis, the institution, the, uh, the convention itself, I want to pose two questions and we'll discuss these in the afternoon on Tuesday uh, on a live discussion on labor market related policy issues. What are the development nexus on labor market as they relate to youth under climate change? Also, sustainable development. How can Africa achieve sustainable development? How do we migrate from middle to high income or from low to middle income? Etc. Some of those questions are, are using climate change. What, what do we see? Because once you go to negotiate, and we'll talk to this in our next session, um, once you go into negotiation, you must know your interest. And you must understand the interest of the other person. So sometimes the person that you're negotiating with has no interest in you to see you develop. They, 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 they like you, they like to see you poor or whatever. So <laughs> please remember that as you go into the negotiations and we will come this to for our plenary. The next three questions, you may have any one of them as uh, exam questions, they will be there, social justice, regional, international, economic development. So these can be um, questions into the exam. So please go into uh, thinking about them later on. I'll stop here uh, uh, and encourage that the, uh, we take a, a short break. And then when we come back, I'll then uh, 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 give you some tips on how to become a, a good negotiator. Okay. And I'll stop here for the time being. I'll take any questions at the end of this uh, next session. Thank you. On. I'm out. Welcome back. Now that we understand the Climate Change Convention, what its key principles are, what its uh, objectives are, and the linking, how to link climate change and your key issues of sustainable development, key issues of food security, et cetera, et cetera. The next thing is now, how do you become a climate change negotiator? So I'm going to uh, uh, run you through, uh, uh, give you a few tips and uh, um, 
do's and don'ts on how to become a climate change, a good, a very powerful climate change negotiator. So remember that at what is called a COP or a COP MOP, uh, a conference of parties, this COP. Conference of parties serving as the meeting of parties is the COP MOP. You are going to attend the big conference. The conference of the parties itself is the penultimum of the climate change convention. That's where the final, final decisions are governed and are decided at the conference of the parties. Below that, what you have are what are called subsidiary bodies. So you'll have SABSTA, SBI, sub subsidiary body for science and technological advice, SABSTA, subsidiary body for implementation, SBI. So these subsidiary bodies will negotiate the text that is given to the conference of parties to be adopted by the conference of parties. So the sub subsidiary bodies can be attended by ambassadors, technical advisory groups, etc., experts in the uh, issues, while the conference of the parties usually attended by ministers, head of state, presidents, prime ministers, etc., et because they, they are the ones who decide. At the subsidiary bodies, you are negotiating and drafting the text for adoption by the COP. But before it goes to the subsidiary bodies, there's a lot of things that are happening underneath. And this is where you need to know where to make the most impact. And we will talk about this. But even in the corridors, just in the corridors of the meeting, you'll find somebody who and talk to them <laughs> engage them um, there will be informal workshops attend them there will be expert consultations there will be contact groups friends of the chair preparatory meetings regional meetings in africa east africa southern africa etc go and attend those meetings go and even inside the regional meeting there will be corridor work there will be informal work there will be expert co go and consult an expert and say hey uh, please explain to me what this means because if you don't have this if you can't exercise all of these your impact on the subsidiary bodies and the impact therefore on the conference of the parties will be very small. Now, usually there will be a difference in uh, 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 a position between one party and the other party. So for example, let me give you an example of say, we are negotiating for technologies. So we were saying, okay, um, we want to do renewable we want to cut down our emissions we're using too much uh diesel to generate electricity but we don't have money for and we don't have the solar technology but we know that country a country one has the technologies but the receiving country b our country doesn't have that technology Once you go to the other country one and you say, please give me the technology for free. He says, no, I can't give it to you for free. So now you start having to negotiate. And therefore there will be a, an aspiration of country A, country one, and a, a position for country two. It is important for you to bridge this gap to reach an agreement. And that agreement must be contributing to, it, it must be somewhere in the sweet spot. Ha having an element of adaptation, mitigation, and development. It must contribute to your labor 
at the same time helping you address climate change issues of mitigating, reducing greenhouse gas emissions, as well as adaptation. That's exactly what you want to do. You can't agree in everything. Oh, it will be magic if suddenly country one and country two agree totally. You come to them and say, I want solar. They say, oh, please come and receive. You say, no, I don't have transport to carry the solar panels. They say, no, don't worry, we'll bring it all. Oh, man, it's very difficult for you to reach that stage. But, but it is possible. So what you want to do in negotiating is consider your the interest of others. You have your own interest and it's either you accommodate the, the, the interest of others, you collaborate with them, or you defeat, or they defeat you, or you withdraw, or they withdraw. But the most important thing is to find that compromise. It's very difficult to be both falling for accommodating or collaborating. There's always something for the other person. There's in it for, they are in it for something, remember. Now, before you go into negotiation, please remember, don't have a premature judgment. Don't go and say, add ah, these people. And most of us do that because there is this historical perspective. We know them. They've been our colonizers. We know them. Hey, they're difficult people. Yeah, yeah. Hmm? Don't search for the one and only run. Don't, don't go take it or leave it. Or that the pie is limited. Hey, if I can't have this, I, I'm doomed. Don't do that. And don't go there with the assumption that others should solve their problems themselves. Don't go there to say, ah, Shauriyaku, it's your problem. Uh, uh, please don't do that. Once you have that as your position before negotiations, then you cannot be a good negotiator. The Harvard approach, which was used when that historic moment when Yasser Arafat shook hands with Yusuf, um, um, the Harvard University of Harvard uh, came up with this method that there will be people and make sure that you separate people from the problem, get away with emotions and perceptions and the way you communicate. Please separate people from the problem. So when you go there, see a human being. The other one, please focus on interest, not position. Don't come with a position to say, I want this. Go and focus on interest to say, I'm willing to share this interest of mine. Because they also have an interest. So you want to have the two interests meet. Their interest to sell the technology to you. But your interest is, is to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. But you also have interest. So maybe instead of just getting the te technology packed, dropped in your country, you can say, well, why couldn't, don't you come and assemble them in my country? You're providing labor. So focus on the interest, not on positions. And invent options for mutual gain. Like I said, maybe uh, um, you want to create jobs. Uh, make sure that they can also have jobs. Criteria, please use an objective criteria um, and d discuss that criteria openly. So for example, uh, when you, go and negotiate, uh, understand the next best alternative for your negotiating partner. 
and we'll unpack these further in the, in the next few slides. Usually there are dirty tricks. P people will do all sorts of things. For example, um, sometimes, um, let me just get all of them out in one time. Sometimes people will escalate demands and uh, uh, start telling you, Yo, you know, we, uh, you, you, your money is less than what we don't want and we can't come to your country because there's corruption, uh, etc. Point out the problem and interrupt negotiation until you have sorted out the problem of the negotiation, the principle of the negotiation. You know, wait for him to go on and on and on and on and then say to him, well, uh, you know, what we've come here to do is to find an amicable solution. But I understand your, your demands and your problems and whatever. Other people come with take it or leave it. Just ignore them and continue negotiating. They no, 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 I want to go each other or no, just ignore that, that statement. Don't try and say, or oh, what? No, just ignore it and continue negotiating. There, there might be a bad partner. Um, a bad partner is the one, for example, who comes up with tricks, you know. Um, he, he writes in such a way that he removes one little word to get to uh, Conard. Uh, write down the position you're negotiating, partner Jace gave you. So, uh, once he says it, even if he says it very fast, well, 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 say, no, please uh, read it slowly. Write it down and verify. And then go back and say, did you say that, that and repeat it to him. Now, Sometimes people tie themselves into a position. They ignore him. Don't ignore the argument that they are coming into. The other one, sometimes there will be unreasonable demand. Um, ask your questions until your negotiating partners that his demands are unreasonable. Just use the words why, you know, what, etc. you know, where, etc. Inducing insecurity. So, so for example, uh, uh, you know, there's not too much noise, I'm not listening. And make sure that what is, what is making you feel insecure, you tell the other person about it. Um, and finally, um, sometimes when you go to negotiate, there is a stress-creating environment. Noise outside, it's too hot in the, in, the, in the room. Talk about it, tell them, uh, can we uh, open the windows please? Can we do this, whatever. Uh, withdrawal to a higher authority, for example, and this is what they sometimes say. And I always say to Africa, use it as well. When the negotiations are tough and you need a break, just tell them, uh, I have uh, to consult the, uh, the, the capital. <laughs> Even if you don't have money for, to phone home. <laughs> just take a break, you know? clarify the position mandate of a negotiation before the negotiation starts. You say, no, 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 we can't start negotiating because I need to consult. Sometimes you're uh, uh, conf confronted with wrong facts. Again, separate the people from the problem. Communicate your doubts and ask for verification without attacking the other partner. So an ideal negotiator, therefore, um, is the one who will resolve the conflict of interest on various issues. 
A good negotiator is therefore one who is a good listener, proactive, diplomatic, analytical, has technical knowledge, language skills, and above all, self-discipline. So it is important that you have all these skills. Technical knowledge is important. That's why I try to give you the science and clearer understanding of how the, the nuances around the climate change convention, the arrangement, the institutional arrangement, because those are very important for you uh, uh, to, to, to enhance your negotiation skills. And these are very important. And when you go to the climate change convention, you're all equal. Even if you are from the smallest, smallest island country, you are equal to the biggest, biggest country. There's nothing like a, a small country in the negotiations. So you must prepare thoroughly for the negotiation. That means you must have a good understandings of the issues, as well as clarity about your country's interest. So before you go there, do the homework in your country to say, what does my country want? What, what is the national development plan? Go and what is the vision of my country? What is this? What is my priorities, etc. So you must be fully conversant about your own interests. And you must be fully conversant with all the key issues uh, that will come up for negotiation. For example, go and read what the, the has been negotiated in the past, okay, or has been accepted or rejected in the past negotiations. And all of that information is available there on the website for the Climate Change Convention. You just go, go into search and search the keyword, whether it is climate change adaptation or Article 6 or whatever. And it will give you all the information about Article, the past negotiations, the decisions, whatever, whatever, whatever. Okay. Now, so prepare thoroughly for each negotiating session. Have a clear brief outlining what deliverables your government expects and be careful that you 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 do not over defend your position um uh you know make your interventions very short and to the point consider relative strategies and chances available in trying to obtain other deliverable so maybe you take it one step at a time. Instead of negotiating for the full package to one time, you take this one, package it. Second thing, you agree, okay, um, that there is a problem that needs to be solved. The second part is how to solve it. The third part is when to solve it. Package it out nicely so that each one of them can be um, uh, measurable. Uh, as a deliverable. Don't introduce complex language um, and uh, try to develop useful linkages to other issues of concern um, and identify areas where you can provide concessions. So you, you can say, well, I'm willing to accept this, not the other one. And if there is linkages to other, say, for example, um, if these if these panels just come, then, um, you know, I won't have labor, uh, you know, explain these issues. Talk about your interest, not your position. Talk, try engage the other people in a dialogue, so to speak. So in summary, five elements for being Part of the negotiator, a good one, is to separate the people from the problem, focus on interest, not positions, create options for mutual gain, develop an objective criteria, 
and develop your best alternative to a negotiated agreement. Say, before you go to the negotiations, what is your or what is your partner? What is your fallback position? What is the minimum that you can accept? And develop that before you go there. Um, and as you prepare for the negotiations, identify the issue, the problem, and whether you want to negotiate or not. Sometimes you don't want to negotiate, you want to avoid Prepare for the negotiation. I understand the problem. Define your partner. Define and understand their partner and make it worse. Your objective when you go into the negotiation is to make the partner of the other partner worse and to improve your partner. And when you go and negotiate, Generate and evaluate alternatives. Are the, evaluate, are the alternatives making me better option? Um, and try and capture all the agreements in writing and say, well, uh, I understood you to mean this and that. And at the end of the negotiation, Congratulate the other party and uh, follow up. It is very important that you should follow up. I won't repeat this, but these are exactly what is. Um, um, and just to um, finally summary is again, separate. Just remember those five principles. Focus on the interest, create options, uh, divine, define your criteria and develop your, uh, your alternative uh, to your negotiated agreement. The other one is summary. Understand your position and theirs. Recognize your interest and theirs. And explore options for mutual gain. And finally, again, use your criteria and identify their partner and your partner. Remember, the difference between a position and an interest is that a position involves a predetermined solution, whilst an interest examines why and answers why, the questions why, et cetera, et cetera. A position requires justification when an interest requires an explanation. A position usually is there to end the discussion. Uh, I come there and uh, I, uh, I've already made up my mind that, uh, I, you know, that I want to finish this discussion quickly. When, in, when you are an interested negotiator, you're looking forward to starting the discussions. When we go into the the, um, the discussions later on, um, I'll give you an exercise, a statement, and we will uh, broadcast it before uh, the two days before the lesson. They can start working on it, and I, I'll invite you to write your position and their position, okay? And then also their interest and your interest. So with that, we have this exercise on how to understand the difference between an interest and a position. And I'll give you a written text, an example, uh, and, and I'll ask you to, to, and then we'll bring that to the plenary and we will discuss it in much further detail in there. Let me stop here and take any questions. Um, and otherwise, we'll meet each other next time.